NASA says the Geminid meteor shower is one of the best shows of the year, and it's happening this weekend. At its peak, 120 meteors can be seen an hour in perfect conditions, and with clear skies all weekend, you should have no trouble spotting them. They'll appear to be coming from the constellation Gemini. Experts say to bring a sleeping bag or blanket, maybe a lawn chair, face the southeast, and give your eyes a good long time to adjust. You'll just want to bundle up as it's going to be cold overnight this weekend. There are other meteors happening this weekend and next weekend, and in fact, they're practically raining down all the time. They can hardly be seen with the naked eye, though. And as David Guildford found out, these specks might tell us more about the universe than those big, bright meteors we see across the sky. A clear night sky is a main specialty. Can you see? While we ponder what's out there, a lot more material from space falls to Earth than you might realize. If you look, that's magnetic. Um, that is a meteorite. John Wallace is a retired science teacher and a NASA ambassador. He's always loved space, but since 2017, John's been getting his hands dirty on main rooftops as one of the first people in the world to prove that micrometeorites fall all around us. They're tiny, okay, and so you might be wondering why bother? Wallace says these specks can tell us a whole lot about what the universe is made of. Focus that just a tiny bit better. In fact, their size makes them more special than larger rocks because micrometeorites take so much time and effort to get here from the edges of space. They're so small and there's things slowing them down. So it takes something like 10,000 years to make it through that path. And so as the Earth goes by, Eventually, we're going to hit that cloud of micrometeorites or whatever, and we pick them up. And so the micrometeorites give a much better measure of what's actually out there. And one of the cool things is we found that things that we've never seen in a meteor before. They are hard to find, with most being 200 microns across. In this range. Two times wider than a strand of hair, but they are abundant. Here's a chart by size, and you see this giant peak, that's all the tiny stuff, the micrometeorites. A hundred tons a day of micrometeorites hits the atmosphere. 100 tons per day spread across our planet. There's no way of knowing how much of that makes it to the ground, and so John spends his summer days searching. Flat vinyl roofs deliver the best results, but he's willing to expand his search. I've done gutters, yeah, yeah. I mean, if it's a metal roof with a gutter, oh my gosh, that's like pay dirt. Since his first find in 2018, John said he's collected and studied nearly 400 individual micrometeorites hidden in plain sight. So you're finding things that no one has ever seen before, Yep. but hundreds of thousands of people have driven by. Or, walked by. or might even be on their sweatshirt at this moment, <laughs> and you wouldn't even know it. He's brought this research to audiences around the state. Last month, John set up an exhibit here at the Maine Mineral and Gem Museum in Bethel. Tourmaline reigns supreme. Home to an awe-inspiring collection of rare items found underground. That looks to me like it has a curse associated with it, <laughs> you know? And some collected from the sky. See, I'm a terrestrial rock guy. I like rocks that are from Earth, although these meteorites are very interesting in many different ways. Museum curator Miles Felch prefers rare specimen, glinting and technicolored, pulled from our ground. Many of these found right here in Maine. But the museum has a room dedicated to the extraterrestrial. They weigh a lot. And even Felch appreciates their backstory. You can't get to the Earth's core but you can have meteorites from planets that once existed that then have broken up. That material has then landed on the surface of our Earth as a meteorite. For me, that's one of the most interesting things, is that you get to see the core of planets that no longer exist. With such wonders to discover, Wallace will spend the winter inside, sifting through billions of particles in buckets in search of more tiny rocks that might give a glimpse at the beginning 
of the universe. That's David Guildford reporting. John Wallace, by the way, is the current Maine Astronomer of the Year. You can learn more about his work by going to scienceguymaine.com. Um, John, I have a metal roof and gutters, so <laughs> my house might be the jackpot. Treasure trove. Just saying. <laughs> so, so cool. cool. And, and but a lot of patience required to sift through all these things are basically the grains of sand mm -hmm. to figure out which ones could be meteorites. Interesting Very cool. stuff.